usually it's the movie that's the meat of the show, but now it's really this story because this story I think has captured all of us, uh, at least that are in tune to the movie industry, uh, the entertainment industry, and those of us who write, uh, those of us who enjoy writing or or trying to make a living as a writer, as am I in some ways on top of being a radio DJ. But this is a much more serious issue uh, with the uh, Writers Guild strike that started at midnight on Tuesday. Day, uh, a minute after the contract with the Alliance of a Motion Picture and Television Producers expired, uh, the guild confirmed that the strike would happen about three hours prior to the midnight deadline, and it sure has. Right now, you're seeing uh, at least the most immediate effects right now. The late night shows have shut down. Uh, Seth Meyer, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, Stephen Colbert, uh, they're all in reruns as of last night. They're all in reruns. You have a couple Fox shows even too, like Gutfeld is on is um is not airing now. SNL is indefinitely on hiatus now. Uh, there's a lot of other shows: Cobra Kai, Night Court, Yellow Jackets, Abbott Elementary. Uh, there's a lot of shows that's just going to keep piling up right now. Uh, as far as shows that are going to be on an indefinite hiatus, uh, to talk about the ins and outs of it in a minute uh, is uh, Dom. But I, I want to say this: one of the biggest cruxes of this uh this because th there, there's a handful of things uh, on the table with this strike and why it's it's come to be but obviously it comes down to money in the streaming era of things uh writers have been increasingly devalued and overworked in the streaming era you're seeing a time when somebody like i don't want to name names but our buddy david zaslov can make a quarter of a billion with a b dollars for a living and he can get rich and he can pioneer and he can pioneer and run right into the ground. Two of the biggest entertainment brands in Warner Brothers and Discovery since they've joined forces. Writers are looking for a portion of that, uh, not getting it. That's frustrating. And that's got to be that's got to be a real kick in the ass to these hardworking people that make these shows that make these shows possible it all starts with words it all starts with words ideas concepts and who has those writers the other piece of this argument and i know dom will distill this down a little bit more cogently but one of the things that's really gotten me to like over the last two weeks or so to really dive into this story because i don't know about how you guys have been reading about this stuff i try not to go down the rabbit hole too much because i get paranoid and i start getting like into my own head but this ai shit's getting scary it's it, it's it's getting nerve-wracking this chat gpt crap this 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 Don brought up a really good point. I'm not even going to steal your, your point on this. I'll give you credit. You brought this up in the group chat last night, uh, a couple days ago, Don, and it's so true. For the longest time, for like the last 15 plus years, with the advent of like robotics and automation and things like that, you go into McDonald's now, you see those kiosks and everything. The long held belief was that menial rote jobs or service work was going to be replaced by robotics or some sort of an artificial intelligence of some kind. Well, now it seems like the pendulum has swung almost, it feels like overnight, but it feels like the pendulum has swung to the point now where it's the creatives that are in trouble now. It's the writers, it's the graphic designers, it's the artists, it's the musicians. We just had a Drake and Weekend song generated entirely by AI, released on Apple Music and Spotify. I played it today for a handful of coworkers. They were none the wiser to it. And that's the terrifying thing with this. And I can imagine the fear in these screenwriters that are thinking that with without these demands what's to stop these studios from looking towards this unregulated still very fertile breeding ground of ai to compose or comprise scripts and then what's a writer's job in that equation you know what the writer's job in that equation is too is to go over go over a 150 page script generated by a computer and make it sound just a little bit less clunky as opposed to starting from a more genuine space and a more probably a more realized idea. That is 
a very brief TLDR of this WGA strike. We could probably go another two hours into detail on this. We obviously don't have that kind of time, but I do know Dom is my guy that I go to all the time to explain stuff to me that is either very layered, political, controversial, or just plain interesting. So I will throw it over to you, Dom, uh, to further contextualize the WGA strike, which is currently ongoing. I appreciate it. And don't forget the other half of, of that whole pendulum swing, which is that, yes, as the more creative ideas and more creative labor gets sucked up uh, by AI and uh, spat out in an automated fashion, that means the the manual labor, the physical labor is not being automated. So now our puny human bodies are meant to <laughs> are meant to be more geared towards that instead of the creative. Uh, but regardless, um, yeah, uh, who are the two parties here? They are mainly the WGA or the Writers Guild of America, also known as the Guild, and the WJ is the joint efforts of two independent craft unions that combined make up about 11.5 thousand members, because writers are the starting point for many forms of entertainment. And that entertainment can include film, episodic television, daytime drama. Okay, it seems my co-hosts have also gone on strike here. Daytime dramas, late night talk cough. shows, sitcoms, <laughs> streaming, animation, children's television, theater, new media, including web series and video games, documentaries, and even fiction podcasts. From a Vulture article, uh, WGA East rep said that Spotify, quote, Spotify workers at WGA shops, The Ringer, Gimlet, and Parcast will not be going on strike. The spokesman did say, however, in the event of a strike, guild members or non-guild members are not allowed to write fiction comp a podcast uh, for, um, for an MBA, that's not master's in business agreement, that's minimum basic agreement, uh, not allowed to write friction podcasts for an MBA signatory company, or they would face disciplinary disciplinary action. So it's not just your fast tens, right? It's it's all over the freaking place, and you're not gonna feel it until you try turning on the TV uh, tonight or your last night, and you find out, oh yeah, Saturday Night Live's off the air. Oh yeah, Gutfeld's off the air. Uh, who am I gonna who am I gonna persecute next? Uh, but yes, yeah, so there is the, the the there is the technicalities of the WGA West and East. All you really need to know is that they are technically independent. There's some whole internal politics stuff there. Um, uh, but really, it, it, if you're east of the Mississippi, you sign up for uh, the Writers Guild East. Whereas if you're west of the Mississippi, particularly Hollywood, you're Writers Guild West. And even though they are independent, they do come together for negotiations um, as well as uh, for, for striking. So in this case, they are one of the same and they are completely coordinating. Who's the other end of this bargain? So you got the the the, the bargaining thing here. You got the Writers Guild, and you got the AMPTP, AMPTP, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. And those studios include Paramount Pictures, Sony Pictures, Universal Pictures, Walt Disney Studios, Warner Brothers, ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, Netflix, Apple TV Plus, Amazon, and more. Those those are just some of the small names in entertainment. Uh, you may have heard one or two of them, but. Yeah, um, this is this is a massive thing that will affect basically a lot of cultural content that we consume practically every day. So Twitch streamers are, you know, independent Twitch streamers are are looking forward to bringing back those Minecraft Let's Plays uh, to help quell the masses. But uh, for now, that's pretty much everything else. And compared to the double GA strike of 2007-2008, uh, a lot of the issues that lasted for 100 days. A lot of the issues there included things like new and emerging media, such as smartphone programming, internet downloads, and DVD residuals. Well, it's been 15 years since that strike, and I think a couple things have uh, have, have come about since DVD residuals uh, was 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 settled. So, Joe, if you could pull up that uh, very plain looking but very important looking uh, negotiations document, if you've got it on screen there. Uh, it's actually a very nice document that they put out on their website, the WGA, the Guild put out. And what are some of these things that they are talking about? Well, it's it's actually very, very extensive. And they include the minimum basic agreements, such as the general increase uh, from the last contract in 2020. So just asking for more money, uh, which you think, oh, man, those rich Hollywood types, are they getting more money? No, you're not thinking of those guys. Those are the guys on the other side of the bargaining table. You're talking about the people that are, you know, 
at in the trenches, the people whose names you never even see. Oh, you're talking about like writer directors? No, oh, yeah, those guys are set. No, we're talking about people at the very, very, very entry level positions. People who just barely got out of Second City, for instance, and you know, dream of going into Thirty Rock. Uh, but regardless of that, other things such as the features, such as movies, uh, and th this is a big one. Appendix A. Now, Appendix A is a uh, big uh, is a big deal in terms of how the WGA calculates a lot of these minimums. So, Joe, if you could pull up that second there underneath issues at play, that second link there, um, where it's like file contracts, schedule of minimums. This one's pulled from the last one, which is 2020. And it's a very long and boring argument, but it does dictate how a lot of these writers do get paid. Um, and a big thing that hasn't been quite settled yet is streaming. So Appendix A is a is a large part of, you know, for things like television uh, for movies. And it gets into the very, very, very little tiny weeds of it. So for instance, there is a part in this document that talks about, hey, what if you write a character that gets offshoot, sh shot, off shot into, uh, into their own uh, TV show, like uh, from Cheers to Frasier or Breaking Bad to Better Call Saul. Well, there is a specific part of this uh, document that specifically handles how the writer who created the character in the first show gets paid down to the decimal percentage and how they get paid in residuals for the new show. So this is some classic Hollywood accounting, and this is how deep the rabbit hole goes. So again, it's not just, oh, her during my fast 11 isn't going to get written now. No, it, this is this is pretty much everything. Now, a big thing going back to the streaming portion is that it takes a while for, you know, the contracts to, to catch up uh, to, to, to the to the new technology that keeps coming out. And we will get to artificial intelligence after this break, Steve. I, I know we're, we're harping on it, but this is a very, very big story. Um, and yeah, streaming had not been included in, ex in uh, Appendix A. Let me state that again. <laughs> the, the big document that governs how a lot of the writers on these classic episodic TV shows from MASH to the Sopranos to, you know, Yellow Jackets or whatever, covered by Appendix A and movies and theater and whatever. C certain, a lot of streaming shows had not been covered under this because it's new media. I think you can see a problem there emerging from the past, I don't know, decade or so of streaming being available widely. So... This has been a thing that's been brewing for a long, long time. And Joe, if you can go back to that uh, negotiations document, it keeps going down. Episodic television. Okay, uh, there's these mini rooms. That's a big topic. You know, oh, okay, instead of the classic, um, you know, 20 to 24 episodes in a season, you now have these mini or like short form series, uh, which is like six to 10 episodes on mini streaming. series. But yeah, exactly. So now you have situations where, okay, I still... I'm an exclusive writer. That's a big thing. I am an exclusive writer for this show. And um, it's a shorter amount of time. Oh, sorry, it's a shorter series. Takes about just as much work. And the post-production is just as much. Uh, which means I am not making as much money for as long as I can. And I am an exclusive entity of this studio. How I, I need more money from the offset. Also, I need to continue to, uh, to make money uh, while while these things are in production. So again, extremely technical. Uh, the people who, the, the, the lawyers and the business and the number crunchers uh, in the WGA are all over this. And this document is very technical, but it's actually very, very concise and very, very effective. Um, and uh, I think I'll leave it off for there for now. I kind of threw a lot at the wall and partially I did that because one of the timer, but two, because that's how much it is. It this is this is pretty huge. The only thing that could be bigger than this is if IATSE, which we were talking about, uh, I think a couple of years ago, if IATSE and the Teamsters went on strike, that's a complete work stoppage. You won't even get a television feed, um, or if, even if that truly. TV. Yeah, yeah, you won't even, even get that. reality TV, which uh, we'll, we'll, let's let's have let's talk about those two things after the break: artificial intelligence and what came out of the 07 strike, other than the union breaking stuff.